London, capital of a community totaling a quarter of the world's population, greets Britain's colonies. Gold Coast Police form a guard of honour at Church House Westminster as the King and Queen arrive to open Colonial Month, inaugurating a new era in Commonwealth relations. A bouquet for the Queen from four-year-old Shahida, daughter of Inche Abdul Hasid of Malaya, sets the note for a warm-hearted all-colonial welcome for their majesties. The presence of the Prime Minister and distinguished guests, as well as the King and Queen, marks the new significance the colonies now command. For, as the King says, progress depends upon a true sense of partnership between all society. It gives me much pleasure to know that during this month of the people of London and her visitors from other parts of the United Kingdom will have every chance of learning, of learning more about their fellow citizens in the colonial territory. It is a matter of much satisfaction to me that so many organizations of different kinds are generously cooperating in this venture. And it is as partners in a great and exciting venture that representatives from Britain's 50 colonies are presented to the King and Queen. For the hallmark of the Commonwealth, says the King, is the cooperative advance towards freedom with rulers and ruled each giving of its best to the common wheel. This almost revolutionary conception of colonial relations is today being worked out in practice. Typical of the success of British development schemes is the harbour of Lagos, gateway to Nigeria, a rich and productive colony. The money that is lavished on such plans will be to our benefit and to that of the people of the colonies. We will gain by Nigeria's increased cocoa, coffee and cotton output. They will benefit in improved health services, new schools and universities and steady progress towards self-government. In northern Nigeria, where the dyeing of hides and skins is the chief industry, that same policy is faithfully carried out. Nigeria's cocoa and coffee exports total more than four million pounds annually. In area four times as big as Britain, her exports are four times as numerous as her imports. Agricultural progress too is swift and Nigeria will play an ever increasing part in the Commonwealth's groundnut scheme. As in Nigeria, so in Malaya. Here, where tin ranks high among her exports, the new conception of colonial partnership is spreading despite troublesome guerrilla warfare. Malaya's rubber shipments to America bring in more dollars than any other export from the Commonwealth. The colonies' drive to help Britain's economy is perhaps best shown in East Africa, where after years of heartbreaking scientific research, a new start has been made in the rearing of cattle. Thus, Britain's dependence on her colonies grows every day. Partners for prosperity, that is the watchword for a great Commonwealth of Nations.